we have talked about a lot about nutrition all the way from the A to Z of nutrition. This webinar is going to be a little fun, a little more check off the boxes about practical tips to improve nutrition and to notice all of those little things. So get your pens and your pencils ready. As always, you know what comes next, housekeeping. I use the term elderly parent or elderly parents for the person you are providing care. Outline for this module is in the course materials. Always print the slide handouts, keep them handy, fill in the blanks, fill in those dot, dot, dots. The objectives of day-to-day -day steps for success. At the end of this, you should be able to identify a variety of simple actions to take to support better health that includes sensory, emotional, social, nutritional quality and food, health monitoring, and essential physical activity. We know this nutrition is an essential consideration for the health, especially for our elderly parents. Being proactive makes life such a lot easier, less stressful, and for us caregivers. It can delay the amount of care and hands-on care that we have to provide to elderly parents. It's a great preventative measure. So you wanna review these listings as we go through them, check off the ideas that interest you, make a plan, and definitely start tomorrow. So sensory ideas. Research and make recipes for different types of salsas to flavor foods. Find a glass that can measure water and work toward 64 or more ounces of water or fluid a day or whatever quantity your physician recommends because again if there are health issues you may have limitations on fluid intake. Use water enhancers. You can find them usually in the water section at the grocery store. They can encourage the consumption of water. You can also add things like watermelon, lemons, limes. One of my favorites is cucumbers to a pitcher of water to flavor that water. Try different cooking methods to enhance the taste. That means you can grill food. Broil meats. You can actually grill or roast vegetables, which are pretty tasty. More sensory concerns, we wanna have that healthy heart. If your parent has arthritis, you can purchase adaptive plates, cups, and utensils. You can use larger sized silverware, plates that have rims so that food can't be accidentally scooped or pushed off the plate, cups that have bigger handles, they may have a straw or a sipping mechanism at the top, all of these utensils and plates help elderly parents who have dexterity issues in the hands and also who have vision difficulties. Again, check out your teeth. If there are dental problems, find a way to correct those. You can temporarily ground or puree foods. If there are swallowing problems, you're probably gonna to want to do that anyway. But foods like mashed potatoes, scrambled eggs, cream soups, oatmeal, super easy to eat. Handheld items are a good idea. You can cut meals into small bite size pieces so that parents can pick them up. You can also serve handheld items that are easy to eat. So finger foods are items like string cheese, egg rolls, small cups of yogurt, hummus, peanut butter and crackers, cheese and crackers, little cottage cheese containers. There's lots of things that make it easy for elderly parents just to pick up food and eat it even on the go emotional and social, start trying some new recipes. You can cook meals with a family or friend, that can be a social activity, and benefit, benefit, you can divide those portions into leftovers that you can freeze, reheat, use for your lunches, take over your parents' house. Lots of benefits to cooking together with people. You can also do something really nice. I had a client who did this. She would bake cookies, and keep some for herself, but she would also deliver them to local fire stations. I have to tell you, the firemen appreciated seeing her every week. She was a delight, and, and honestly, they added a lot to her life. You can make meals a regular social event by establishing a once a month Sunday dinner, or another type of potluck or a regular meal opportunity with friends or family. The computer, obviously, great place to research recipes, 
and create a weekly meal plan so that you can go grocery shopping. Also, I suggest spending daily time outside to lift the mood. Even if you only go and sit outside on your front steps or back steps for 10 minutes, or you have a balcony or you can take a walk in the yard, such a mood booster and the physical activity boosts your appetite. Also, if you are depressed, please do take medications for depression if it's recommended by a physician. Taking medication supports an appetite. And for your parents, create a consistent daily routine. They need to have a reason to get up every day. They need to have a reason to do things. And if you can, join a hobby or a social group. That goes a long way to improving your mood, making new friends, opportunities to go out to eat, opportunities for really improving all parts of your life. Next, we want to talk about nutritional quality and food. Many of these recommendations you can get by meeting with that nutritionist or dietitian. They can give you nutrition recommendations and follow throughs. You can do them on a trial and error basis. Definitely print and use that Tufts and AARP plate example so that you can move toward a more consistent variety of foods every day. A lot of us get stuck into ruts where we eat the same thing. I'm no different. You know, some days I'll have oatmeal every day for breakfast one week, and then the next week it might be protein pancakes. It's good to vary that. Throw in some fruits and vegetables and more types of bulky fiber items that will help your um, body process foods and will eliminate constipation. Also, eat some small meals or snacks every two hours if you become too full by eating large meals or if you're trying to balance your blood sugar, that is a really good idea to do that also. You'll find that you don't get as tired throughout the day. Have an Oreo cookie every now and then. Have a glass of milk if you like it. You wanna eat foods high in protein. And again, you can take that whey protein and put it into milk and milkshakes and other things. Eggs, nuts, cottage cheese have protein in them. Heavy cream is very high in calories. You can use it in your coffee, use it to make milkshakes, add some more whey protein to it. You can even create protein shakes from fruits and vegetables. And you can throw some whey protein in there. That way you're getting your fiber. And for seniors who don't cook or cooking is difficult, Meals on Wheels is a community program. You can go cook at your parents' house and make enough for leftovers. Cook with friends, make enough for leftovers. Cook at your house, make enough for leftovers. Take it over to your elderly parents. Let's talk about health monitoring. You see these feet on this scale. Many of us women and men don't like to get on that scale, but honestly, the more often you stand on the scale, the more able you are to gauge your weight and see how small changes in your activity and your eating can change your weight. So again, going back to stomach concerns, make an appointment with a gastroenterologist if that is a concern. For elderly parents, put them on a weighing schedule, weigh them once a week or Monday, Wednesday, Friday if they really have some serious health concerns. Avoid heavy meals or greasy or fried foods. Those can just cause indigestion and stomach upset and just make you not feel good. Another tip to avoid heartburn and indigestion is to sit up at least 30 minutes after a meal. Don't go lie down on the couch or go to bed immediately after eating a meal. Not good for you. Other issues. So we talked about dry mouth and dental problems. Investigate over-the-counter products for that. There's one called biotin for dry mouth. You can also investigate non-obvious reasons for not eating. I had a client believe it or not, who had a noisy refrigerator, it would like rumble, almost like a compressor when it shut off. And she didn't sleep very well to begin with, but that every time the refrigerator turned on and it turned off, kind of like the boom, 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 it woke her up. And so she didn't sleep well, she had a poor appetite. If you've got a parent that has any of those neurological concerns, Parkinson's disease, MS, 
closely monitor their chewing and their swallowing. And if your parent is over age 80 and you are with them and they're eating or drinking and they're <coughs> doing this, take them in, have a swallowing evaluation done. Consider probiotics or digestive enzymes. Look at taking a senior multivitamin. Most important, schedule regular medical appointments to monitor health and well-being. It's kind of like taking your car in for an oil change. You can catch something before it gets worse. And physical activity, participate in a physical therapy evaluation with your elderly parent. Follow through with those recommendations. Complete those three exercises we talked about. The chair, sit to stand, the time up and go, standing on one leg to balance. You'd be surprised how quickly you can gain strength. Start with one or two, work up to 15, 20, 30, 40. Also walk inside or outside of the home. You can work up to walking several blocks or a mile or more outside your home. You'll be surprised how much you look forward to that daily activity and to those walks. Don't forget, participate in muscle strengthening activities using exercise bands, light weights. You can also use canned goods. A can of green beans can weigh about one pound. <laughs> if you're fortunate enough to have room in your house, and you have an interest, invest in exercise equipment, especially, but only if you'll commit to using that equipment and you've got space. Otherwise, you can join a gym or a recreation center if you want to socialize. And honestly, you don't need to join a gym. You can do exercises in your home. You can get out and walk. There's plenty of things that you can do that are free for exercise that you don't have to spend a penny for, which is important to a lot of us. So as you can see by talking about nutrition over and over again, like a chronic disease, it's connected to many parts of life. Use all of this knowledge to help an elderly parent live a healthier and more active life. Use this knowledge to start changing your health today. Start talking to your children and other family members about health. We don't have to be old and sick. We can be old and healthy and active and avoid all the experiences that we as caregivers may be seeing with our elderly parents. It is a choice. I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Thank you for being with me for this webinar and for this webinar series. I so appreciate it. I will see you in another module in another webinar.